Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Welcome to Buy Cities, a show by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and all of our friends in the GLBT community and our allies. Thank you so much for tuning in to the world's longest running show on bisexuality. Yes. So, Dr. Chamali, I understand that you are the person who made this wonderful guest part of our lives. So I'd like you to introduce her, please. Yeah, I'm really excited. We should tell you that we're flying by the seat of our pants tonight. <laughs> we had a guest lined up who at the last minute wasn't able to be here because of really bad weather in Minnesota. So what did we do? We checked with our crew. <laughs> and our lovely director, Sally mm -hmm. Corbett, is going to be on the show tonight to talk about her, their story, their story about being in the bi community and coming to bi cities as our director. So Sally tonight is going to be on camera rather than in the booth directing this show. Mm -hmm. So Sally, thank you so much for at the last yeah. moment being bi flexible <laughs> and being with us. As one does. <laughs> one does. You know, we, we need to, you know, just keep our dancing shoes on. So Really? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, without you, we wouldn't be by cities because, right. you know, we waited for about three and a half years to put a crew together. And I should tell the audience that the way that we met was that we were trying mightily to put a crew together after we were off the air for about three and a half years. We took, spent a number of years trying to get by cities back on the air. And we put a word out to uh, the Bisexual Organizing Project. Mm -hmm. And I happened to go to an opportunity conference, which was a GLBT health conference in the Twin Cities. And Sally, you were there yes. as a representative of BOP. And somehow we got to talking about bi cities and BOP. And you said, I'd like to be on it. And I mm -hmm. said, good, can you direct? <laughs> and you said, yes. Yes. So, uh -huh. wow, what a, what a great story. Yeah, funny how things work out that way. Yeah. But yeah, I am BOP tables at that conference um, we have for the last few years at least, at least as long as I've been with BOP. And I think we had gotten an email from you all about Bi Cities like shortly before that. And like I was interested in it because I have a background in audio engineering and I've done like a little bit of like TV film production work in college. And so I was like, oh, I definitely want to be a part of this. And I think I remember asking you if you needed a sound person. And you were like, well, we have a sound person. Do you want to be the director? And it was like, well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, Just say yes, yeah, right? And, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, and then I took classes to get certified in the equipment at SPNN and um, got the ball rolling that way. And then we started having meetings and rehearsals. And here we are. So. Yeah, and our first shows now are back on the internet, and you did a great job. Yes. So you're doing a wonderful <laughs> job back there. Thank yes. you. I get a lot of help from the rest of y'all. <laughs> we do have a great crew. Mm -hmm. Yes, we from, sure do. Wow, we surely do. In, in the midst of, you know, recovering from a terrible snowstorm and, and you know, 30 below wind chill, we're here tonight. We're here tonight, And yeah. only mm -hmm. two people weren't able to be here, so we're... Uh, Besides our guests, yeah, right. <laughs> two people from the crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, and, and I can remember. In fact, I, I said to Sally um, uh, as we were getting ready to do this interview, I said how when I first met you that I was like, oh my gosh, you know, she's so young. I'm thinking, you know. <laughs> she's more than twelve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at but, least that old. Yeah. Yeah. But to, so you were already involved with BOP, the Bisexual Organizing Project, mm -hmm. here in the. By, by cities. cities, yes. And so, um, how how did this start? Where did you come from? Are you a Minnesota native? I, I really this yeah, is tell a us your story. Yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm from Rochester, Minnesota. Originally, I was born and grew up there, and um, I got involved in LGBTQ organizing in high school and mostly college. And I went to college in um, Rochester for a couple of years and went to UW Oshkosh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, like continued my activism work and then finished college, came back to Minnesota and was looking for, um, you know, jobs, getting out of my parents' house, that kind of thing. <laughs> and um, there was a post on Facebook from the Bisexual Organizing Project, which was, uh, which I was a little bit familiar with from going to Twin Cities Pride and stuff like that. and. Um, it was a position for an administrative assistant 
um, part time, and I applied and interviewed and <laughs> got the job and moved up to Minneapolis shortly after that. And this was uh, just over two years ago, like August 2016, something like that. And I've been with BOP ever since. And um, I've like always, like when I started in college, been very passionate about LGBTQ and um, other social justice organizing in general, but that this was bi-specific and that I'm a bi person that was really special to me and an opportunity I really wanted to um, have access to. And so I've really loved being involved with BOP and what I get to do through them. And the more I do it, the more I love what I do and see how it sort of fulfills me. So, so you do outreach with BOP. Yes. And, you know, I, back in the day, I mean, this was like, well, before by cities. In the last century. In, yeah, the, in, the, in the previous century, right? <laughs> that uh, I was on the board of directors of BOP for a period of time. And it just makes me think about, wow, a position mm -hmm. as an administrative assistant, a part-time administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's a paid position. It is, which is um, you know, yeah. like how wonderful mm -hmm. is that that we've come this far that we've that we've got a a paid position and and that you applied for the position and now hold it. So yeah, it's really um, my position. I think is actually really special, like in the context of national bi organizing. So there are um, five bi specific nonprofits in the country. There's BOP. There's um, Bisexual Resource Center BRC in Boston. There's BQAC in Chicago. Paves in Denver and by Net USA, which is sort of, just sort of national. And um, out of all five of those organizations, there is one paid staff person. Everyone else is volunteer, and it's me at BOP, and I'm like quarter time independent contractor, not even like an actual staff person, like on payroll or something like that. And so um, it's kind of a wow. big deal. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, and, you're unique, one of a kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and that also, um, I don't know, it's kind of a test to the state of what resources are like nationwide for bi organizations compared to LGBTQ in general organizations like the HRC or other national organizations that um, have a much broader reach and much more resources that, you know, we don't, well, we're almost all volunteer organized and led. Like BOP, we have a board of directors, it's a working board of all volunteers it's like 10 to 12 people and mm -hmm. um, then just sort of more like on the ground year-round volunteers as well and that's how BOP runs that's how all the other um, organizations run too it's just volunteer power which is really amazing that is amazing when you think of all the resources wow. that go into the gay lesbian and maybe even the transgender community I'm not quite sure on that one but yeah mm -hmm. that's somehow we keep it going yeah it's interesting because um, so there's research confirming that the bi plus population makes up more than 50% of the LGBTQ population overall, about 52%. But we also um, have historic, historically gotten the smallest amount of institutional funding of any demographic in the LGBTQ community since like 2002. It's been less than 1% of grants earmarked for a specific population. So less there's a huge than disparity. 1% yes. of mm -hmm. grants. Mm -hmm. Wow. And did you, can you tell more about, you know, what data were referenced with that we are over 50% of the mm -hmm. GLBTQ population? Whatever you can say, this is oh, sure. new yeah, to me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so um, a report was published in 2016 by the Movement Advancement Project, and the person who I believe did all of the research on it, their name is Heron Greensmith, and they're like a by activist and writer, and they do tons of work for the community, and um, they're really amazing. And so they authored this report, and it was a nationwide study of LGBTQ population that found that 52% of the LGBTQ, the LGBTQ alphabet soup population identifies as one of the bi plus identities, so bisexual, pansexual, queer, omnisexual, non-monosexual, attracted to more than one gender. Oh my and, gosh. Yes, and it's available online. It's, um, you can download on PDF um, if you, I think just Google like Movement Advancement Project. Movement the, Advancement Project. The title of the report I think is Invisible Majority, so. 
Oh my gosh. You know, and that's amazing because for the longest time, you know, buys didn't exist. We were, you know, just went through that whole stuff and still are probably. Mm -hmm. And then for the longest time, they also, well, we're the minority, you know, there's hardly any of us. And as Lisa Diamond has said in her research with sexual fluidity, that no, we're not the unicorns, we're the horses. Mm -hmm. So this is amazing. Wow. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like wow. that phrase, yeah. Yeah. So I bet you've learned a whole lot of other uh, things about the bi community and bi essentials because one of the things that Bob does is bi essentials. Yes. So following on lead, um, Anita's lead here, what are the things can you tell us about the bi community that you've learned since being in your post at Bob? Sure. So um, we also know that people in the bi plus community have um, very significant mental health and socioeconomic and physical health disparities compared to both like gay and lesbian folks and the straight population as a whole as far as like um, depression, chemical dependency, suicidality, suicidal ideation, and this um, applies to youth as well. We've, there have been surveys about um, Minnesota youth in particular. So like close to home, this isn't just like Oh, youth in California, of course, there's more LGBTQ people there. That's not necessarily true. And um, I don't want to necessarily say any like percentages that I don't have memorized mm -hmm. and um, be incorrect about that, but the, um, the differences are staggering. And um, it applies to like um, sexual assault and domestic violence and intimate partner violence as well, especially um, by plus women. Yeah. So um, we are the greatest the largest population with some of the most significant needs that receive the least amount of funding and resources. resources. So that's, yeah, and it's all sort of a mutual reinforcing, mutually reinforcing vicious cycle sort of thing. You know, the things I like to say often um, are that we're pack animals. Mm -hmm. And when we get marginalized from people that we feel close to or most like, it's really damaging. Uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about we're a queer among queers and double marginalized, mm -hmm. uh, it's important to say that by nature of who we are doesn't mean that there's something inherently wrong with us, you know, with the depression, anxiety, substance use, and so mm -hmm. on. This is an effect of marginalization, dealing with minority stress, not feeling like we belong, mm -hmm. people not validating our identities. Absolutely. And so it's important for the audience to know that, you know, that's not something that we come into the world with. This is what happens when we are marginalized, even by the GLBT community. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And the term bi plus, you know, I, I saw this button that uh, bisexuality is not binary. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, that whole concept, I mean, we've been trying, to, we, we've been living it for as long as, each of us has known we are under the bi umbrella. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing of, of continuing to um, educate people on mm -hmm. who we are and what terms are appropriate. And so I'm, I'm still, I'm just blown away that <laughs> I thought, well, I'm going to learn some cool stuff. I know that. You know, I'm going to learn <laughs> stuff about you. I did not expect to hear research <laughs> <laughs> results. You know? This is amazing. So is it shaping, you know, because I liked the idea of when, um, let me see if I can get her name right, Shauna? McNamara. McNamara, McNamara yes. thank you. Uh, when she was here um, talking about, you know, the educating people about bisexuality uh, uh, and enter entertaining people mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. one of the ways that we can teach people about who we are. Mm -hmm. So what, um, what do you see happening in terms of outreach that, that you're involved with or that you're just excited about that you know is out there? Yeah, so Bob does um, a lot of community building and outreach locally for the BiPlus community. We have um, a resource available to alley organizations called BiPlus Essentials, which you mentioned earlier, and that's um, a training that educates other LGBTQ organizations about the needs of the BiPlus community and how to meet them. And so, because a thing that they say is like, oh, we don't have bi people coming to our stuff, and like, how do we fix that? And um, like, how do we provide for them and make them feel welcome? Because, 
it's true that you know we don't resources for gay and lesbian folks don't serve us the same as they serve gay and lesbian folks because we're not gay and lesbian folks and so there's a mismatch there and um, so we it's like an ongoing relationship we build with this organization to like help them build the tools based on their organization's mission and what they provide and um, how to develop that and sort of check in and maintain. So that's something we provide to the community and um, we also do, we try to do social events. Bob did a member survey in the last year to, serve, to see what our um, community and membership wanted to see from us and wanted to see more of and what some obstacles were to them accessing our resources and um, social events was plugged really hard people want to see more social events, things they can just show up to and meet other bi people at mm -hmm. because of the isolation we experience so much and not knowing other bi people. And um, so that's something our board has been trying to work on more this year. And we do the Because Conference every year, which um, is a national conference for the bi plus community. And it's been going on since 1992. So there's been there hasn't been one every year since 1992, but it's been around most for 26 years. years. Yeah. yeah, most yeah, yeah. years. There was a bit of a hiatus. And um, so, yeah, that's been a sort of a cornerstone of Bi Plus community building for that long. And um, so those are the, the big things I know. And we've been connecting with um, other organizations around the country about kind of what they're doing. And um, there's been more and more um, local groups popping up around the country um, in the last couple of years. Like for a long time, it was just um, BOP, BRC, and Binet USA is the only organizations, but we're starting to see more and more. And like PAVES in Denver recently has been around a while, but recently became a 51C3. And same with BQAC in Chicago, I believe. That's such so, a great and, name. I don't yeah, know what it stands for. It stands for <laughs> Bi Queer Alliance Chicago. And one of the Bob's quack. former <laughs> board members just became the president of their board, Jesse Miller, and she used to live in Minneapolis, and now she lives in. Oh my gosh! And so we've got a bit of a connection to them now, and cool. it's really cool. So, what are you hearing about what's happening around the country with with bi folk? You know, in terms of the other organizations that you connect with. Yes. So um, I actually just got back from creating change in Detroit, right. which is um, the National LGBTQ Task Force. Um, annual conference, which is like a big sort of professional development activism conference. And so I went there and helped with some stuff for the day long Bi Plus Institute. And um, we saw some BRC friends there. And we went to myself and my friend who went, I went with, went to there. They give a workshop about um, sort of like Bi Plus community building, like how to do it in your own place that you live and some of the resources and strategies they have. And so that became sort of like a little bit of a collaborative thing throughout with like us talking to each other. And we got to talking after the session and um, about how all of the organizations, we want to have some kind of like retreat and get together and talk more about like what we're each doing around the country and stay up to date with each other because there isn't like a lot of that going on right now. Like we hear things now and then, but we aren't as connected as we would like to be. And um, yeah, so we're trying to get the ball rolling on more of that, I guess. You know, I don't know if this, if you think this would be relevant, but within the speech and language community, there are those of us who are specialists in voice, mm. and we have a national listserv, you know, email listserv. But then within that, those of us who are specialists in transgender voice care, um, there is a, a, a Facebook group that is just for people who specialize in that. And I wonder if that would be a way to, to connect more easily or that, you know, because it seems like there are these five organizations mm -hmm. that are really at the forefront with, with the activism mm -hmm. that, I don't know, because I'm not on Facebook, so <laughs> I'm guessing I don't know is. what I'm yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah. But I've heard how successful that, that this has been with other groups. So I don't know who's, who's going to try to spearhead yeah. creating this, <laughs> but you know, we got somebody here who knows what she's doing. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I think that's a great point, and I think there is room for something 
some sort of resource for us to all like be on the same page about literally what we're doing. yeah literally <laughs> yeah, yeah. same web page in a sense. and yeah so I think that's something we would like to see happen for sure. What's it been like for you? Um, you know, one of the things that, that I feel almost shocked about at times is when I go to the American Psychological Association annual convention, you know, I go to some of the um, conferences or workshops on bisexuality and research, and the same issues that I faced when I first came out are not all that different. Mm -hmm. You know, being invisible, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I'm wondering what your experience has been, if that's paralleled what. What, what do you see as some of the issues facing bi folk these days? Um, unfortunately, I think some of the issues that have been longstanding are still around. But I think um, the resources that we have, especially like younger folks and um, youths and school age folks, the resources they have um, for helping with those issues um, are becoming more and more accessible like especially like with the internet and connecting with others and being able to like form communities. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's where that's at, I would say. But. Yeah, I think there's probably more acceptance overall in the queer community about including the B's and the T's and so on, because there was mm -hmm. a time when out front Minnesota wasn't out front Minnesota, and it was a gay and lesbian community action council. Yes. So, you know, we had to mm -hmm. fight for years to get our name included and stuff, and that was one of the political mm -hmm. issues over time. And Yeah, and I think the persistence of the bi activists that we do have and really working hard at, at the work that they do to make sure that we are included and we are visible and that um, LGBTQ organizations do start doing better to serve us and include us. And so, yeah, I think it comes down to just us advocating for ourselves and those of us that like can and do do that work. You know, you're making me think back to in 2011, Marge and I did uh, some interviews for Bi Cities that were, and this was before there was the, uh, be when be moving up to when Minnesota was gonna have a vote on, on whether or not uh, marriage should include uh, people, uh, two individuals who identified as the same gender. And uh, we did a lot of work, and as did many, many people. And I can remember that the organization that was doing the outreach in the state, it was gay and lesbian, but it was like people who were bi were not even at the, the uh, table, and the the woman who has been on the show, who's so fantastic, um, who is now a, an attorney and a PhD. I, do you know who I'm talking uh, about? Lauren. Laura, Lauren, Lauren Beach. Beach. Oh, yeah. Lauren was, you know, confronted them and said, look, you know, what about the people who are bi? You're totally ignoring that we exist. And so I'm just thinking about, has there been progress in that arena, that we are included, and and uh, uh, our uh, our post production editor Daniel Thomas Cummins is very uh, involved in working with the DFL party locally, and it makes me think about you know what what observations he might have to share mm -hmm. about are we still you know not even really thought of that it's mm -hmm. gay and lesbian and. Uh, so I'm just curious if, if any of you have had any experiences that you feel like we are making, we are moving forward in terms of visibility, either politically or, and also we, we did lecturing at, yeah. at churches, yes. or at least, at least one church. Um, so yeah. I, I think historically, um, change has been incremental. Mm -hmm. And it started out being the gay movement, then gay and lesbian, and then gay, lesbian, bi, and then gay, lesbian, bi, transgender. And it's not uncommon when people are trying to make incremental changes to throw one of the other alphabet soup letters under the bus. Mm -hmm. So what you're, that's a good example of what you're giving, is that when um, Families United or United, whatever it was, that the group that was uh, working on, on the anti-gay initiative in Minnesota in 2012, you know, they only wanted to talk about gays and lesbians and they didn't want bi people telling their stories because people didn't get us. And so there was that kind of discrimination going on within that organization even that 
Lauren Beach was talking about. And it's not uncommon, you know, even at the national level mm -hmm. when they're looking at federal employment legislation, you know, to throw the T's under the bus, the transgender. Yeah. So that's not uncommon. And of course now we've got this big backlash with the current administration yeah. that a lot of the work that we've been doing is like now we're just trying to survive and everything's going backwards. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a... <laughs> well, be careful what you ask. You know, you've got two <laughs> verbal people here, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> well, I know we've got less than three minutes left, mm -hmm. so I kind of took us on a, a little... Yeah, a little uh, let's, uh, let's, tangent. Let's, little, yes, <laughs> let's, let's go back let's and look go. and bring it forward. So um, what are you most excited about? That uh, well, besides being the director of yes. Bi Cities, and, and now exciting. being talent on Bi Cities, <laughs> yes, yes. So, yes. so yes. we better watch it. You know, next, <laughs> next we're not going to have a job here. You know, cause, <laughs> so we're really, I'm so thrilled yeah. with, Thank with you. the work that you've done so far. And Daniel, as our post production person, wow, you two are rocking the house. So, uh, um, anything else that you want to ask in this? Only final closing minute? moments. You know what? What? What message do you want to leave with our, our audience oh. from your unique perspective? I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to be on TV today, but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh. let's see. Um, yeah, bias exist, and we are great. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're here. No, We're that's, here. that's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and you know, I think about that the whole non-binary thing. That mm -hmm. the first thing that people think about. When you, when you immediately, well, if they're not straight, they must be gay. Yeah. Think about maybe they're bi. Yeah, yeah. You, like that's even something I've had to teach myself oh. is you have to unlearn yeah. the assumptions you make about people. And exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you say, our floor manager, Tom? We got a minute. We're time, time, to, time wrap. to wrap it up. All right. Sally Corbett. We are wow. absolutely thrilled that you're part of Bi Cities. Thank you. And you do as well in front of the camera as <laughs> behind the camera yeah. in the booth. Yeah. So thank you so much for at short notice. Thank you. Yes. Being a grateful part to be of here. Us. Grateful to be Wonderful. a part of this. Well, and you know what our thrilled. signature goodbye is. I do. All right. <laughs> camera three. Bye, Bye for, for now. now.